Dear Rector, dear authorities of the university, dear authorities, colleagues, dear friends, good morning. It is my pleasure to be here today and I would like to express my sincere thanks to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy for organizing this symposium of peace building and conflict resolution and for inviting me as a speaker. Besides, I would like to thank the university for supporting the proposal of hosting this important symposium. My lecture is entitled, as Mark said, uh, The Role of Higher Education in the Faith Dialogue and Peace Building. So I will be talking about higher education, that this is my field. We will see what intercultural competency is, what intercultural models there are, focusing on three of them. And after, we will talk a bit about interfaith dialogue and how America deals with this issue. We live in a very plural world. We have always been diverse, but nowadays with the internet and despite globalization, we know more about our ethnic, religious, and cultural heterogeneity. People have different cultural and social values, different habits, different ways of life. In this context, we have to acquire new abilities to deal with this cultural diversity. We need to develop what has been called intercultural competence. D. Ford, in 2004, defined this term as the ability to interact effectively and appropriately in intercultural situations based on specific attitudes, intercultural knowledge, skills, and reflection. The starting point for intercultural competence is a positive attitude towards situations involving people from different cultures, for which an open mind for diversity is essential. Intercultural competence also requires flexibility to adapt to new situations, new communica communicative style, new ways of behavior, and new norms and values. This presupposes that one has to consider that one's own culture worldview is not the unique worldview possible. This consideration can lead to a new estimation of foreign uses, norms and value sets that can then be accepted. Intercultural competence thus implies being able to change one's own frame of reference, adding a new set of principles to one's own. Marcelo Otago, Secretary of the Congregation for the Evangelization of People, says that interreligious dialogue is simultaneously an intercultural dialogue. When talking about intercultural competence, we can find different models that have tried to establish the characteristics of the concept. Rubens' behavioral model in 1976 identified seven dimensions of intercultural competence. The first one is display of respect, or the ability to respect and think positively of others. The second interaction posture refers to the ability to react to other opinions in a non-disapproving way. The third is orientation to knowledge. That refers to the ability to accept that people explain the world around them in different ways. The fourth, empathy, is the ability to put oneself in the place of others. Self-oriented role behavior, the fifth, refers to the ability to be flexible in order to negotiate meanings and behaviors. The sixth is interaction management, or the ability to initiate and finish interaction, taking into account the needs and desires of others. And the seventh, tolerance for ambiguity, means the ability to react to ambiguous situations without an incidence. Viran proposed the five-factor model of intercultural competence with attitude, knowledge, skills of interpreting and relating, skills of discovery and interaction, and critical cultural awareness. Attitude refers to the ability to value others. Knowledge means knowing social groups and their practices both in one's and the other's culture.
Skills of interpreting and relating refers to the capacity to transmit events and documents from another culture to one's own culture. Skills of discovery and interaction is associated with the acquisition of new cultural knowledge and critical cultural awareness to the ability to evaluate perspectives, practices and problems in one's own culture and in other cultures. In North America, Bennett created a dynamic model called Developmental Model of Intercultural Sensitivity. It was aimed to explain how people respond to cultural differences and how their reactions change over time. The model considered six stages set in two groups, an ethnocentric group with three stages and an ethnorelative group with other three. The ethnocentric stages are denial, defense and minimization. The first one denotes the negation of difference in another culture. Defense means the reaction against the other culture based on a supposed superiority of one's own culture. By minimization, it is suggested that all cultures are similar with only minor differences. The relative stages are acceptance, adaptation and integration. Acceptance implies admitting and valuing cultural differences. Adaptation involves being able to shift the frame of reference to the other culture. And integration represents incorporating other worldviews into one zone. Among the four primary traits used to place people as belonging to a particular culture are nationality, locality, ethnic origin and religion. One of these main aspects of intercultural competence, religion, needs interfaith dialogue as one of the strategies used for peace building. Interfaith dialogue involves more than just debating about religion. It involves shared initiatives, activities, participation and observation of each other's traditions and customs. Interfaith dialogue should be considered as a liminal process during which participants demonstrate a disposition to share their own thoughts and to actively listen to others in order to modify their own worldview and to incorporate another perspective to their thinking, augmenting knowledge and insight. Furthermore, the dialogue should be grounded on recognition of religious diversity and should seek respect and tolerance between religions, being its key goals to reinforce social cohesion, build social richness and solve social problems. Education, therefore, is crucial to foster interfaith encounters in order to collaboratively formulate the principles and guidelines to promote interfaith dialogue at different levels, such as students' interest, teacher involvement, staff training, and institutional commitment. Institutions of higher education traditionally have performed a prominent role of, in many of the social change movements, such as gender equality, environmental care, or multiculturalism. It is now a must to include religious diversity and interfaith dialogue among the cross-curricular issues in the universities as it is an essential asset for the students' quality education. Our students need to know how to cope with linguistic, cultural, ethnic and religious diversity, a fundamental skill when they begin their professional careers in this globalized world. So, what can teachers do at classroom level? There are some educational strategies for engaging students in interfaith dialogue and cooperation. Firstly, the teacher can address their social responsibility. Secondly, he can refer to the professional future in which intercultural communication may include interfaith encounters. Thirdly, the teachers may take may make them think of the possibility of taking the lead of interfaith dialogue and peace building. And lastly, the teacher can talk about the opportunities of becoming a researcher, an academic and thus an expert in the field. Being a cross-curricular matter, 
Interfaith cooperation will be relevant in a lot of academic subjects of fields, including those that you have in this slide. For more than 18 years, Merica University has received students from all over the world to come spend a period of their academic training with us. Every effort is made to integrate international students into daily university life. In the majority of programs, they attend classes side by side with Spanish students. Students can take courses in the area of specialization, design their own curriculum, or take only courses in Spanish language and culture. International students are students in their own right at Nebrija. Our national students are mainly Catholic, but some of them are Muslims or Jews. Our international students come from very different countries and they profess very different religions. As you can see in the slide, we have all those religions present at the university. Nevika's commitment to interfaith cooperation in higher education is present in our subjects, in which we address different issues related to culture, intercultural communication from professional purposes, introduction to international business, contemporary world, attention to linguistic and cultural diversity, and so on. But there's still room for improvement, and other initiatives have to be taken at different levels, institutional staff, research or classroom practice, for example, reviewing the institutional dialogue and peace building training, training personnel in intercultural skills, providing resources for interfaith dialogue, research projects, present a communication campaign in favor of interfaith dialogue and peace building. There are many things that can be done. In conclusion, I would like to underline the fact that we must build on our recent achievements to make progress in such an important issue as interfaith dialogue, because, as Akbar Ahmed pointed out, in our globalized, blended world, where different religions and cultures encounter each other daily, you will have nothing but turmoil and violence unless you actively promote interreligious and intercultural dialogue to achieve harmony and understanding. And, quoting Nelson Mandela, I am convinced that the best weapon is to sit down and talk. Thank you very much. Yeah, I agree with you. Social media is extremely important to create opinion. Uh, and, uh, actually, um, Spain is also a multicultural country. We have four languages, four official languages, we have different kind of religions and they are all official. Okay, so yeah, I, I agree with you that media are extremely important. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I'd like to ask you. Introduce uh, yourself to please. Sorry, uh, I'm Carmen Fernandez, I'm a researcher at Fred Juan Carlos University and a student. And uh, I'd like to ask you if uh, you think that there is a real need for intercultural competence or education or intercultural dialogue because, um, I mean for new generation, because uh, I have my first contact with the subject uh, prior, prior university in the room, and during the night, for example, uh, it was a real unknown subject, I mean, uh, a real, there was a real need of intercultural dialogue or training uh, business people or students on intercultural uh, competence. But now with the global globalized uh, world, I think that the children and the students uh, they feel that they, they, they feel that uh, dialogue as something natural. So my question is if uh, you think is we need a real emphasis on intercultural education or uh, or this is a uh, lot still to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. Yes, I think there's still room for intercultural education. There are lots, you, you will never know how many oh, stereotypes people, students have about different cultures, how much they uh, love their own culture as opposed to the others. 
So I think there is still room for a lot of work to be done in intercultural communication and specific subjects are extremely interesting for that sort of objective. Thank you very much for your expose. My name is Tain Jende, I'm Cameroonian and I work with the United Nations Operations in Cote d'Ivoire as a civil affairs officer. Um, I have a que two questions to ask. Um, what would you see as the challenges in promoting interfaith dialogue in universities? For, um, I'd like you to build a bit on some of the initiatives you spoke about. What are the kind of challenges you face in those initiatives? The second question is just a question of curiosity. There are some universities which are like Catholic universities and other universities which are secular universities. Do you think um, universities which are for like a label like Catholic University or of the same thing, do you think they pose a, a problem to inter, do you think um, they, they are like an obstacle to interfaith dialogue? And do you think secular universities um, give more room for interfaith dialogue? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, we have, this is a secular kind of university, all right? But we have lots of people that are from different uh, faiths and religions. They, they are in Spain some uh, religious universities, but I don't think in higher education that is a, a big issue. I think that flexibility and an open mind is the, I mean, Everybody uh, understands that all the people have different cultures, different uh, religions, and it is not a problem normally. I don't remember the question, sorry. It was challenges in promoting interfaith dialogue in their activities. Oh, right, okay, yes. We have all these subjects that we mentioned that were in the slides are uh, intercultural communication in some way. And then we talk about many things even taboos, and of course also about religion. Another thing, it is good to have these interfaith dialogues within the classroom. And I think the, the, the challenges we face are that many students are agnostic, so they don't, they are not interested in that. But some, some others are interested. And at last, uh, those agnostic people become interested in all these faith things, even if they don't believe. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's one more question. Can you please go up, please? please. Hi, uh, my name is Ali. Mm, I am one example right to put out. Uh, I am family member of Spain and Dominican Republic. But in the same time, I organize and prepare a project to wear a small boot. But I have a question. As well, um, I think she is uh, talking about um, social media and um, different opinions about religion. Uh, I think, um, I know one situation about uh, Turkey. In Turkey, maybe we know uh, about social media is uh, banned from the government. Uh, I think the you people who are different in, in this, uh, I think, in this generation, we have to, to change the other because we we know what example we know one people from Ukraine. She are 20 years. Um, I talking about situation Ukraine Ukraine. She tell me I don't know why my father thinking this way, but why you think uh, the young people try to, to say something social media, but a lot of time we get no uh, no uh, uh, no good um, answer, maybe. Uh, yes, sometimes there is no room for in social media for some messages that are banned because those social media would not cope with, with those uh, uh, religious creed or whatever. But this happens in, in all the world, so it's not only Oh, of course, I understand that in, in some countries it is uh, more dangerous or, or it is uh, more difficult to express 
yourself, but life is so hard for in, in many places. So we have to, to go on fighting against this, right? Exclusive. Thank you for the opportunity for me to ask my questions. Uh, my question is about the position of university. Is it uh, neutrality is an issue for you as part of a university? Because sometimes to build interfaith dialogue among the stakeholders is quite hard, especially in the divided society or in conflict situations. And if it's if it is an issue, so how to uh, to 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 build a neutrality in university in order to strengthen uh, interfaith dialogues in the society? Thank you. Uh, uh, as I said in my uh, in my speech, I think education, and especially higher education, plays a, a main role in this interfaith dialogue, uh, and. I think it has to be worked out. I mean, people have to know that we are working on that issues, on those issues, because it is extremely important, not only for the interfaith dialogue of itself, but for peace uh, throughout the, 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 the world. So we need to know each other. We need to, to know the other culture, the other values, the others. I mean, we need to talk, talking. They say that talking is understanding, and I agree with that. Thank you. Let me pose one question as well, I'm curious, because for us at the Institute, the issue of education, as I was saying, is really priority one. Uh, what I love about the example of education as a vehicle of cultural diplomacy is that it actually is an ideal way, I think, to facilitate a dialogue without controlling the dialogue. If you think of a typical academic exchange, for example, usually like Erasmus, for example, Erasmus will help you to get to the university in terms of travel costs. They'll give you a stipend to support you while you're there, and that's it. You can pick your professors, you can pick your classes, you can like the number or dislike it. And that seems to be an ideal model uh, to discover other countries and cultures as well as yourself. So in that sense, I wonder if you could just give us a few comments. What would you see as the future role of the university as a vehicle for bringing peace and also cultural diplomacy? Well, I think that uh, university has a, an essential role because we are somehow educating the leaders of the future. So we have to, they have to get the humanistic kind of, of education. And one of the human uh, main uh, issues is religion. So I think that we do have a future in this uh, interfaith dialogue and peacemaking. Yes.